What's up friends, JT Tapius with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. And today I have some questions for you and we're gonna get deep here. And so brace yourself for what's to come because it comes from a good place. And I truly believe that if we could wrap our heads around what I'm about to say here, in some way, somehow you've been stagnant in your fitness approach, then I believe that this has the potential to change everything for you. And so maybe you've hit all the gyms, hired a bunch of coaches, you've tried every diet known to mankind, and you know, dieting and losing weight has just remained elusive. You think you might have gluten intolerance, veggie intolerance, protein intolerance, insulin intolerance, you name it, you've blamed it on being big boned, you have a slow metabolism, uh, being too old, too young, your hormones being out of whack, your coaches didn't get you, and of course, you might even think that the devil's playing a part in keeping you from success. You've done keto, Atkins, South Beach, high tide, low tide, tidal wave, and yet weight just doesn't budge. Now, to be fair, some of these symptoms or situations could be legitimate, but from what I've seen, only one or 2% of the times is this truly the reason for your lack of results. I know, here's where the hard part starts. What I find most of the time is like 98, 99% is what I call lack of diet tolerance. It's all about not sticking with the program, not committing to your coaches, mentors, not following through. This bias kicks in when people interpret or remember information in ways that match what they're already believing. In other words, they've given various diets, coaches, and plans a shot, but they're set in their ways and they can't step out of their own comfort zone and embrace growth. <laughs> I told you, this is gonna be a little deep and a little hard, but please hear me out. In the context of dieting and sticking to a diet plan, people tend to focus only on things that back up their excuses or not sticking with their chosen diet. They brush aside anything that contradicts those excuses. This messes up their view of their own behavior and stops them from seeing things how they really are, doing their diet. In many cases, this resistance comes from not being cool with authority figures, often due to rocky relationship with, with parents or their upbringing, their subconscious rebellion can affect how people respond to any form of direction from authority. It's not just about diet programs, it happens in relationships too. A wife may struggle with uh, her marriage because of a strained relationship with her father. She might resist her husband's guidance even when he's being super understanding and leading her gracefully. A husband might, might just be shut down by any advice that comes from the wife, baggage from his previous relationship with his mother. So as you can see, these things are intricate, right? And they usually come from our, our childhood. Even when he knows, the husband knows deep down that his wife's advice is good. It's the golden advice, but they, he's just not taking it because he had a strained relationship maybe with his mom. Childhood scars, can mess with our adult lives and block us from living the life that we're meant to live, right? A, a life full of joy and happiness. Now, I want you to notice how we went from talking about physical health to troubles in all parts of our life, all because of resisting authority. Um, I'm well acquainted with this. I, I struggle with this as well, and it's one of the things that I have to really battle in my day to day. This is why I can speak with authority about this is because I myself have, have experienced a lot of this resistance. It's a huge deal for a lot of folks and it brings a ton of pain. On the flip side, there are folks who maybe aren't the brightest bulbs or the most talented, but they succeed because, not because they're awesome at listening to advice or, or following principles or taking action, they're just humble and ready to listen and follow direction. They're the ones who thrive. Now. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't question coaches, mentors, teachers, you absolutely should. But what we're talking about is that stubborn streak that just wants things your way or their way, right? And no matter what you say to these people, they just, they're, they're set in their ways. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So I can't bring up this challenge without giving you a solution. 
Here are nine ways to beat the resistance to authority. This has worked for me and I continue to just apply these things to my own life. I, I believe that it's really, really the thing that's gonna help you get through pride that's really holding you back if you found resistance in this area. Number one, pride. Look within and realize you're being rebellious, right? This is just knowing specifically what you're doing and being introspective and realizing, hey, I'm messing things up for myself. Number two, stubbornness. Ask God for an open mind and willingness to learn. A lot of times that comes from hardening your heart, not just not wanting to listen to advice based on your previous experiences or even strained relationship with your family. Number three, work with the best, right? I, I love the saying, uh, befriend everyone, but only work with the competent. Pick a coach with a track record that, that you know, you've seen this, this person's testimonials, a, a record you want to uh, emulate, right? You wanna see the, to his testimonials, you wanna see those uh, reflected in, in, in what's happening in your process. Number four, um, you wanna make sure that you work with the right coach. Choose a coach who's truly invested in your journey, someone who really, really cares. Not someone who's just there to show up to get a paycheck, but someone who truly, truly emotionally mentally, spiritually is connected to your journey. Number five, open communication. Keep those lines of communication open with your coach. This is one of the big challenges inside of our program when people disconnect. And if they're not connecting uh, consistently with the coach, it's very easy to fall off. Number six, total honesty. Be totally honest with the person that's guiding you. You need to take total ownership. If you drop the ball, let your coach know so that you guys can course correct. Number seven, don't give up too early. This is another big thing that I see, right? People get frustrated because they think that everything is gonna go perfect. They don't expect the relapse and then they relapse and then there's just, they ghost. Don't give up too early. If something isn't working, chat with your coach before you go rogue. Number eight, be coachable and be prepared to make changes to get results. That's what coaching is, right? Coaching is like a plane. Uh, this is no longer a, a valid analogy, but there was a time in, in aviation where a plane was off course 98% of the time and all the pilot was doing was course correcting until he would land on a dime. That's very much what coaching is, right? And tweaks need to happen in order for you to land on a dime and bring your goals to fruition. Number nine, humility. Oh boy, does this one go a long way? And do we all, we all need to work on this, right? Humility, stay humble and accept your own limitations in that change process. Change is hard, right? It requires you to be persistent. It requires you to have grit. It requires you to get outside of your comfort zone. It is painful. Growth is painful. Remember when you were a kid and your bones would hurt when you when you were going through a growth spurt? This is the same thing. Anytime that you step outside of your comfort zone, you're going to be challenged. Finally, if you really, really want to get to these goals, if you really want to achieve these goals, I would highly recommend that you take a pen and a paper and you become very introspective. If you're having some challenges, if you've yo-yo dieted a bunch of times, you've been on all these different plans, you've worked with all these different coaches and in your mind, you're simply thinking, this just doesn't work. I'm just, I'm meant to stay like this. I would tell you otherwise. I, I've been doing this for 23 years and I've seen couch potatoes become super potatoes in no time. But the common denominator there is the ability to actually listen to coaches, to actually apply the things that the coach is, is asking you to do. And so what I see in this process is really, really cool because someone comes in with the idea of losing weight, but then all of a sudden what happens is in the process of incorporating all these things, being coachable, having humility, uh, really being able to step outside of your comfort zone, you actually grow as a person. And on the other side, you see that person is stronger, that person is more equipped, not just physically, but in all areas of life. And that's, a, that's what I absolutely love about what I do is that this is not just about the physical realm. This impacts all areas of your life in a very, very positive way. You know the saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. I subscribe to that idea 100%. And that's what I love about being able to tame your hunger and activate your physiology. Those two things are not the end all do all. I know who moves the needle, but I'm here to say that it is a tangible, tangible way to get going, to really, if, if you're stagnant in any area of life, I believe that this has the potential to move you in the right direction, to start providing different thoughts, different emotions, different actions, creating positive habits in your life that ultimately will impact your character. And so as you can see, uh, it's not just the aesthetic destination, it's the intrinsic rewards that come as a byproduct of being able to listen to a coach, follow instructions, put your head down, be humble. And when all these things happen, my friend, it all comes together. And on the other side, you're gonna be 
a better, stronger, edified person that is actually going to be a, a light in the midst of darkness. You're going to be an example to many people. And so I hope you incorporate this. I hope I didn't ruffle your feathers too much, just enough to get you moving in the right direction. And like I say at the end of all my videos, if you've watched this video, right, and it sounded good to you, it resonated with you, but you do nothing with it, then we just wasted our time. We don't want that to happen. So I hope you take action. Action is true power. And I believe that with this, if you can go back, listen to the video and leave your comments down below. If, if you refute anything I'm saying here, JT, but you don't understand this or that. Hey, we're here to have a conversation. Leave your comments down below. Hit a like if you enjoyed this video so YouTube can send it out to more people. And these are the things I love speaking about, things that edify the mind, the body, and the spirit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you're gonna absolutely love this video here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.